Brumbies and Hurricanes, folks. They said this one was going to be close. And sure enough, it came down to a TMO call in the last minute of the game. I say last minute. We're talking well clock, well into the red. So that's going to be the main talking point. But there was a fair bit of rugby played before that final call. We'll go through some of the key events, stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. But ultimately... With 37-33 on the board, the Brumbies are still alive. There is going to be one Aussie team in the semifinals. They're going to face the Chiefs next week in Hamilton. Uh, but it was the Hurricanes. It was the Hurricanes who started this one pretty much out of the blocks. Naholo got himself on the board within two minutes. Adi Savia adds to his kind of try-assist collection for the year with a pretty sweet offload. Seven points to nil early. But... To continue the theme of this game, which was essentially momentum swing after momentum swing, tit for tat, you score, I score, uh, the Brumbies hit back not long later, a lot of pressure, they did really well to move the ball through the hands from right to left, Ikitao with the final pass to Sapsford with a nice try, so both sides with really good scores, early seven points apiece, this uh, quarterfinals looking like pretty good value for money. Like, what you don't want in quarterfinals is absolute blowouts between mismatched teams. You want a proper arm wrestle. This is the game that got the billing that it was going to be an arm wrestle, and thankfully it delivered. Um, Brett Cameron scored three points uh, for the Canes after the, the Brumbies got pinged for a high tackle, so 10 points to seven uh, in front. But then the Brumbies, to continue the kind of tit-for-tat theme, managed to score a try in return. It was nice to see Jack Debrosini, who's a big dude, um, kind of take a wee step and take the ball to the line. Uh, he managed to go from pretty close range. So 14 points to 10 with a with another Brumby score. Cameron gets another penalty to bring it back to one point. And then um, 24 minutes, there's a five-meter scrum for the Brumbies. They go left, and it's one of the weirdest tries you've seen because Ikital gets the Hurricanes winger, Sinkinson, to bite in. So he's got a man outside him and it's clearly just looking for the offload and the sure thing try, but he can't free his arms. So he just keeps on with the leg drive and eventually just goes over himself. It's a bizarre moment. It's kind of like Adi Savia style with that kind of big old leg drive, but he did really well. I can tell I really like that guy. Uh, he's a great player. So yeah, 19 points to 13 with that point. Missed conversion from the sideline. And another penalty... Though for the Canes, man, they got four of them across the course of the game. They just able to kind of keep that scoreboard ticking along. Makes it 19-16. Uh, Brumbies get one in return to make it 22-16. Brumbies scrum penalty makes it 25-16 at halftime. So it's a two-score game at halftime. Brumbies are looking not comfortable, but that's a decent lead in a the quarterfinal. They've had slightly more ball, 52%, but way less possession, only 43%. But key for the Canes is they've dropped seven balls, seven knock-ons in the first half. Clean breaks as one apiece, like neither side is really able to kind of cut the other one fully open. Defenders beaten as 11-5 to five in favor of the Canes. So in terms of that kind of one-on-one -on -one busting tackles, your Canes are more likely to do so. Second half, Nick White and Dane Coles have a wee bit of a... Uh, a discussion on the ground, probably talking about some gardening, seeing as they were amongst the grass and getting very close to each other. But um, yeah, they got to know each other a little bit better. Um, but then, man, geez, Adi Savia, that dude is a freak of nature in the best kind of way. I mean, that ultimately very complimentary. Like the pick and go he makes from about five or six meters out is just nuts. Like he drags a couple of Brumbies players with him to just go over the line. Like, normal guys can't do that kind of thing. They get smashed. But Adi Savia just keeps going. So he brings it back to a score, 25-23. Brett Cameron pushes a penalty to the side not long later to get them, would have got them in front, but they missed out on it. But you could feel it's all Canes. Like, they've come out of the sheds way more fired up than the Brumbies. The Brumbies are a bit all at sea. And um, it does, it just keeps going, man. The, the Canes get, they do get a penalty um, not long too later. They're definitely in the ascendancy. They go one point in front, 26-25. And then, again, in terms of kind of miracle tries, Devin Flanders scores a bizarre one. Like, it happened in my, my son's game this morning where, you know, one of those kids who just gets the ball 
and is kind of just running and just nobody really goes in for that tackle. You don't usually see that in professional games, but that's what happened. There was a messy scrum and Devin Flanders grabbed a ball and just ran with it and ran and ran and ran and just ran all the way to the line. So um, he's got some wheels, but at 33-25 and with the Canes having all the momentum, the Brumbies seemingly not being in the, in the races, it looked like they may be just going to potentially run away with this. If they get 40 points on the board, you can't see the Brumbies coming back. However, uh, the Brumbies do really well. They put a kick through, which Brett Cameron has to kind of field in the backfield, and then the Brumbies just swarm him. He concedes a penalty in that backfield, so it's a chance for the Brumbies to get some momentum. Sure enough, from the penalty, up for touch. Touch means a maul. The Hurricanes, they know the maul's coming. They set for the maul. They don't get a man in the air. But it doesn't matter. As impressive as the Adi Savia try was, with just the leg drive to go over individually, as a cohesive unit, the Brumbies just smashed pretty much straight through the, the Hurricanes' defense. There was one initial stop, but then, boom, the, the, the Brumbies guys just went straight through. So, blown away, 33-30, uh, back to properly game on. Um, and then, yeah, the Brumbies got a scrum penalty, opted for touch, looked like they were going to maul again, but this time the Hurricanes were able to stop it. <clears throat> But um, I think it was Karifi gave away a penalty on D. And um, weirdly, the Brumbies decided to tap it. And at the time, I was thinking, that's the wrong call, man. Back your maul. Your maul was so good. But uh, no, they tapped it, went through some phases. And sure enough, Tom Wright, who's had a pretty prolific season, manages to go over in the corner. Um, he throws the ball at, um, was it Brett Cameron? But there's a, there's, a bit of, there's a bit of handbags. I mean, Brett Cameron as uh could see the play was coming he was calling for assistance out on that sideline because he was isolated but the hurricanes guys didn't get there in time so yeah right goes over there's some handbags but ultimately um Lossio's come on for deborah Sini. slots a beauty from the sideline he's only just come on but it makes it 37 33 pretty important kick otherwise it's 35 33 and uh I think the game would have gone a different way if not for that conversion. Um, that being said, the game wasn't done. Obviously, this game ends with some drama. Uh, 79 minutes, the Canes have got a five-meter line out. They maul it. It's down by goal, but they go advantage. Back for the scrum. Uh, well, back for the advantage, they call for a scrum. Adi, um, he goes for a carry, but he stopped. And then the, the Brumbies are fiddling around at the, at the base of the ruck again, off their feet, so well, not rolling away. So um, back for another advantage, call for a scrum again. Phases, eventually, Adi Savia goes over. And the ref calls on field, no try, no clear grounding. And uh, that's pretty much what size what happens here because the TMO has a look at it. Luke Reimer's got his hand under the ball. Whether or not any of that ball touches the ground for the end goal, uh, Adi Savia reckons it did, uh, but the TMO had not enough compelling evidence to overturn it. So, Canes fans will 100% say they were robbed, and uh, Brumbies fans will 100% say Roma had his hand under it. That's just one of those kind of 50 50 calls, I guess. But um, yeah, there was a hand under there, but you'd think part of that ball probably touched the ground, but you couldn't really see it conclusively on camera. So, that's just, that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I guess, man. But Adi Savia was really gutted in the post-match. He said he scored it. So, yeah, I don't see why he would lie about it, but maybe because he's pretty gutted and just lost the game. Not saying he's lying. Not saying he definitely got it, but you know what I mean. That's just one of those 50-50 calls. Sometimes that's the way it happens. But, yeah, um, it's unusual for the players to kind of come out and straight out say that at the end of the game. But I guess... He's been asked to give a post-match interview straight after the game, so that's what he's got to do. Um, possession finishes 46-54 in favour of the Canes. Territory 42-58 in favour of the Canes. Uh, run meters 426 to 412 to the Canes. Defenders beaten 30 to 15 to the Canes, and clean breaks 3 to 1 to the Canes. But knock-ons 11 to 2 to the Canes. Yeah, they dropped a bit of ball. Yeah, the Brumbies had to make 203 tackles to the Canes, 145 credit to the Brumbies. When they needed to defend, boy, did they defend. Uh, Tom Wright, though, on attack, 122 metres, a clean break, two defenders beaten. 
uh, Ikitao, he's a he's a proper player, man. Try, try assist, four defenders beaten. And Pete Samu, who you usually think of as kind of Mr. Offloads and good carries and whatnot, real versatile. 18 from 18 tackles, proper defensive shift. Savia, try, try assist, four defenders beaten. That's just a normal shift for him, normal day at the office, but he's incredible. The Holo, 64 meters, clean break, four defenders beaten. Blackwell, 14 from 16 tackles on D, but um, there you go. Well done, Brumbies. Hell of a game. Hurricanes, you gave it a hell of a crack. And it came down to a bit of a flip of a coin at the end. Um, yeah, off to Hamilton for the Brumbies guys. They will face the Chiefs next Saturday in what should be a pretty interesting game. Part of me is kind of happy for the comp that it's not for New Zealand teams. I don't think that would have been a great look, but um, Canes versus Chiefs would have also been pretty tasty, so... There you go. Uh, you guys listening, thoughts? Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.